Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to go over a couple more performance tweaks that could possibly increase your FPS and reduce some of your stutters. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. Before we get started in today's performance tweak video, I first would like to remind everyone that everybody's system is different and the results will vary depending upon system specs. With that said, if you have any comments, please post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the high precision event timer for Microsoft Windows, what it is, and why it may benefit you to turn this function off. Next, we're going to revisit the ISLC program. We have gone over this in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll post links down below in the description, as well as up here in the top. We are not going to be going over any of the download and installation of this program. So if you do need that information, check out that video below. We will be focusing on the timer resolution, as most of you will probably have an incorrect timer resolution, just like I did, when we first did the install. Lastly, for all the 30 series cards and above, we're gonna go over a new feature for NVIDIA, and that is the resizable bar. This will actually affect all of the AMD users much more than NVIDIA. So you may see a bigger increase in performance than the NVIDIA users. Before we get started with any of these tweaks today, the first thing we wanna do is create a system restore point. To do that, we're going to come right down here to the search bar and just type restore. At the very top, you'll see create system restore point. We're going to left click on that. Next, after the dialog box opens on your screen, you will have all the available drives here in the protection settings. You want to make sure that your local disk drive is highlighted and selected. And you also want to make sure that the protection is turned on. If the protection is not turned on, we're gonna go down to configure. You're gonna come up here and make sure that you tick the turn on system protection. And then you're gonna come down to disk space usage and turn this to about 5%. When you have done that, we can hit apply, okay. Next, to create the system restore point, we're just going to left click on create and we can rename this anything that we want. So I'm just gonna call it tweak. Hit create. All right, so the first tweak we're gonna go over today is the high precision event timer. What is a high precision event timer? It's a timer that's used in most PCs, and in some cases it increases performance, but most of the time it does not. Disabling the HPET removes micro stuttering and screen tearing that may occur during gameplay. It also allows unrestricted input output to occur. This results in a very raw and extremely responsive connection between you and your PC. So now that you understand why we want to disable the high precision event timer, let's go over the different ways in which we can do so. There's actually three different ways to disable the high precision event timer. We're only going to be turning the high precision event timer off in Windows. To do that, we have two different ways that we're going to apply this change. So the first way we're going to do this is to go down to the Windows bar, right click, and then we're going to go up to the device manager. Once you're in device manager, we're going to scroll down to where it says system devices. You want to tick on the drop down for system devices, and then we're going to scroll down and search for high precision event timer. When you find it, we can left click to highlight, right click, and we're going to disable the device. I've already done that, so I do not have that option available. The other way to disable the high precision event timer is to go down and open the command prompt. So we're going to go down to the search bar, we're gonna type in CMD, and then we are going to right click on command prompt and run as administrator. Now, it is very important that you do both of these to disable the high precision event timer, just to make sure it is turned off in the system. For this part of the tutorial and a couple others, I will have a section down in the description for a copy and paste. So all you need to do is go down to the description and paste in the command that we're going to be typing in here. The command we're going to type in is bcd edit space forward slash set use platform clock 
no. And then just hit enter. Now that that is done, we have completely disabled the HP ET function for Windows. Next up is the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is going to perform two major functions for our PC. The first one is it's going to purge any excess memory buildup in the system. This way, when you are doing your long haul flights, you don't get that excess memory buildup, FPS drops, stutters, and things of that nature. The other thing that this program is going to do is set a current timer resolution for your PC. Timer resolution is how often your processor updates or refreshes. Older operating systems, XP and earlier, would have this set to 15 plus milliseconds as default. This could also increase your ping by 10 to 15 and drop your FPS by about the same amount. So in the last video, I went over how to set up this program and put in all of the correct figures for your operating system. One of the things that we did not go over is how to make sure that your current timer resolution is set properly at 0.5 milliseconds. It's very important that this is set at 0.5 milliseconds as if it is not, it can introduce more latency to your system and that is not what we want to accomplish here. So if your ISLC program is already showing 0.5 milliseconds, you can skip on to the next part of the video. If not, and you are at 0.4 or anything else other than 0.5, we're gonna go over now how we can make sure that this is set up properly. So the first thing we need to do to correct this issue is to again, bring up the command prompt and make sure you open it in administrative mode. Next, we're gonna type in three different commands here. Copy and paste will be down in the description so you don't have to type all of these in individually. We're also gonna be going over each of these commands so you understand what they're gonna be doing. And one of these you may not wanna do if you are on a laptop. We'll get to that here in a second. So the first command that we're gonna use here is the bcd edit space forward slash set. Then we're gonna type in use platform tick space yes and then you're gonna hit enter. So what this command does is it forces the clock to be backed by a platform source and no synthetic timers are allowed. That means that it is gonna be backed by this ISLC program and set using the wanted timer resolution that we had put in here previously. The next command that we're gonna enter is bcd edit space forward slash set disable dynamic tick space yes. Dynamic ticks are a feature that lets Windows stop the system timer when nothing is happening in order to conserve power. What this command does is it disables a power saving function that is really gonna be used for PCs or desktops. If you have a laptop that is gonna be plugged in all the time, then you can go ahead and use this command. If you are only using battery on your laptop, this may draw a little bit more power so you may not want to use this command if you're using a laptop not plugged into a constant power source. The last command that we're going to enter here is bcd edit space delete value use platform clock and then hit enter. Now if you so happen to get a error message here or something like that, it's perfectly okay you are all good to go and we are done with the command prompt. And what you wanna do at this point is restart your computer and after the restart, open up your ISLC program and when you start the program, it should now say 0.5 milliseconds for your current timer resolution. Lastly, we're gonna be going over the resizable bar and this is going to affect all of the NVIDIA 30 series and above GPUs, as well as some AMD GPUs. So what is Resizable Bar? In technical terms, Resizable Bar is a PCIe Express interface technology that can boost the frame rate performance of select games by granting the CPU access to the entire frame buffer. Essentially, it makes the relationship between the CPU and the GPU more efficient 
by removing the 256 megabyte block read limit. With this cap removed, your system will be able to handle multiple video memory requests simultaneously and prevent a queue from forming. So now that you know what resizable bar is and why you may want to enable it, we now got to find out if your system is capable of enabling resizable bar. To do that, we just want to open your NVIDIA settings and then we're going to head down to where it says system information. We can left click on this and then it will bring up some information here on your system. If yours has resizable bar there, that means you have the availability to use resizable bar. To the right of that will tell you if you have resizable bar enabled or disabled. To enable resizable bar, you have to enter your BIOS and turn on the resizable bar function. Once you have done that and then logged back into Windows and go back to your NVIDIA panel to system information, it will then tell you that resizable bar is activated and it should say yes. Once that says yes, we can proceed to the next step of the process. The next piece of software that we're gonna need is the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. This is basically a more enhanced version of the NVIDIA Control Panel. Links again will be down in the description, so go down there and check that out. You're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of this page to where it says Download NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Give that a click, download it, and then you're gonna extract that to your desktop. When you do, you should be left with a folder here called the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. We're gonna go ahead and left click on that. And then we're gonna left click on the NVIDIA Profile Inspector application. Now, if this is your first time looking at this application, it can be very daunting. And I highly recommend to not touch anything other than the three settings that we're gonna go over right now. If you do happen to adjust something and you didn't mean to do that, you can always come to the very top here and hit restore current profile to the NVIDIA defaults. Now for resizable bar, this can affect different games and sims differently. So I highly recommend to test this out on your different games or sims to make sure it's gonna benefit you. But I can assure you that for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can expect five to 10% FPS increase by enabling this. If you are only using Microsoft Flight Simulator on your system, at the very top here, you can leave this as global driver default profile. But if you are playing other Sims or games, I highly recommend to make sure that you change this to Microsoft Flight Simulator only. This way you're setting up the resizable bar specific for Microsoft Flight Sim and it will not activate on any other games or sims. To do that, we can hit on the drop down, and then you can just start typing in Microsoft. Once Microsoft Flight Sim comes up, the one you're gonna to wanna to select here, it says Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's the one you're going to select. Once you have done that, you may also notice the Microsoft Flight Simulator at the top here. That'll allow you to know that you've selected the correct one. So now that we've got that done, to access these three file locations, we need to enable the hidden features. So we go right up here to this hourglass or the magnifying glass, and when you tap on that, it will open up all the other hidden features of this program. Again, don't touch anything, and you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. Once you get to the section that says unknown, you are in the right area. The three profile changes that we're gonna make here to activate resizable bar is the FOOBA, FOOBB, and FOOFF. So what we're gonna do is highlight this and you'll know that you're on the correct profile because these are pretty much the only ones that say 20 profiles available. Then we're gonna go over here to the right, tick on the drop down, and we're gonna select number one. Again, we're gonna highlight the second profile here, tick on the drop down, and we're gonna select one. Lastly, we're gonna head down here to the last profile, the F00FF, tick on the drop down, and here we're gonna select number four. So it'll be the first one here uh, on the drop down list. Once you have done that, none of these settings will actually take effect until you come up to the very top and hit apply changes. We're gonna left click on apply changes, 
and now those changes have taken effect and you have forced the resizable bar to be activated on Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.